Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Carl Bainbridge and first off I'd like to start by wishing everybody a great big thank you for getting so many views on my first YouTube video which of course was a review of the British version of Big Brother 13. Um, I always said to myself however, I would only do a second YouTube video if I got two things done. The first was if I got enough views and enough positive feedback to do a second video. And the second was if I got a fast enough broadband connection so we don't have the same problem that we did last year of a sticking video. Thankfully, however, we've got a BT fiber optic broadband um, in just last week um, and hopefully the picture will be of a much better quality. I'm going to be sticking on the same sort of thing we're talking about Big Brother, but instead of talking about the British version, I'm going to be talking about a, a, my review of Big Brother 14 as well as looking forward to tonight's finale, which hopefully I'll be staying up for. It's going to be about 4 o'clock in the morning if I do try and stay up here. Um, but I'm going to be giving it a go, and I hope that you enjoy this review. First off, I'm going to be talking about tonight's finale, and of the three people remaining, which of course are Dan, Danielle, and Ian. Now, of the three, I'm personally rooting for Dan. I loved him in Big Brother 10, and of the three, I think he's played by far the best strategic game. I think mean, he's made the biggest and boldest moves of the season, he's taken the most chances, and he's also had most, the best manipulation um, of every housemate remaining, not only in the game, but also of the jurors remaining as well. And I think if we were to base purely from a strategic point of view, I think Dan should deserve to win easy. However, it is not purely a strategic game. And I sort of fear that Dan has made the same mistake that Russell Hans did in Survivor Samoa and Survivor Heroes vs. Villain in being complacent in judging the Jew, Jews' opinions of himself. And I think that's something that came from him when he unanimously Big Brother 10 and that Dan feels like he can do whatever he wants with the Jews and still be able to get away with it. And I don't think he realises just how much neg negative feedback there is from the jury and on how they perceive him. He's almost certainly not going to get Frank's vote, regardless of who he's against. And he's almost certainly not going to get Shane's vote either, because he's hurt them on a personal level. And as Shane showed in his interviews, Paul Shaw, that even though he might respect Dan as a player, he doesn't as a person, and he won't vote for him solely on that regard. I just cannot see Dan winning, whether it's against Danielle or whether it's against Ian. Um, of those two, however, I think that Ian has played quite a strong social game. His social game actually has been very, very good um, and can't be overlooked. And I think that his strategic game has also been very underrated. I think that the way that he played both sides between the Quack Pack and Frank and Buggy without either side really really um, seeing that um, there was something up about him was very, very good. However, one of the drawbacks I have with Ian is that especially in the late stages in the game Ian has been very out of the loop in how the game has been played strategic and I don't think he realises just how close he's been to going out in this game. He could have very easily gone at the final four here to it, final four, and he could have very easily gone in the second fast forward week when Dan was the head of the house. Um, and I think that's going to be a drawback to all, come back to hurt him. However, I do think that that social game and the fact that he's just such a warm, likeable kid is going to sit him well. And I think that if he does win the final H to H and goes against either Dan or Danielle, he could win very easily. Danielle, I'd, now, I don't have major problems with Danielle. I think that she has been a good contributor to the series. I think that if you've been watching the feed, she's absolute gold because she's an absolute train wreck. But I think that with Dan and Ian both being in contention, if Danielle was to win, I would see it as a real disappointment. Because I think that one of those two serves to win great. It's not that I hate Danielle, it's just that I don't think she would be as good of a winner. And I think that if she did win, it would sort of end up like Big Brother 11, in which a poor winner would taint the series on a whole. Um, speaking of Big Brother, however, 11, however, I would say that this is probably the best series that we've had since Big Brother 11. And it's been, it's because Big Brother 12 and Big Brother 13 were both very poor for their respective reasons. Uh, 12 because we had nobody who was willing to suss out the brigade, and 13 because we had Alison Grodner completely ruining the, ruining the game 
to try and see everyone fear boots. Uh, 14 has also been the first season in a long while where we've had a real emphasis placed on strategic play. And after the years of Rachel screaming about Bortus grabbing a life vest and Jeff and Jordan showmance, it is good to finally place the emphasis on strategy again, which is what Big Brother in America should be to me. Um, if there's one drawback that's been of this season, it's been Frank. I, I just don't understand what the appeal is about Frank. And I guess we're trying to see him as uh, an underdog that was supposed to root for somebody who everybody wants out and yet he still survives. Yet, I don't say that. What I say is somebody who is very self-entitled, very arrogant, and expects people to fall over just to let him win. Exactly the same as Jeff Schroeder was in Big Brother 13. And it's not an enjoyable tr it's in not an enjoyable trait to watch, and Frank is just not an enjoyable character to watch in the game. Uh, unfortunately, however, we know that Grodner loves him, and we know and he's almost certainly going to be back if they do one of the All Star series. And if he's not, then he's going to be ended up as the jetty role of that irritating character who just comes in year after year, even though nobody likes him. Um, but on the whole though, I think 14 has been a good series, maybe not the franchise saver that it should be, but certainly a strong series, and one that I have certainly enjoyed watching. For future seasons, however, I think some changes need to be made. We need to keep this emphasis on, emphasis on strategy, and less on the showmances and the false stuff. And personally, I think we need to get rid of Alison Gardner. I think that since she took over in Big Brother 8, Gardner has been a detriment to the show in manipulating the game for her favourites um, and just basically sticking a beak in when she doesn't need to and I think that a fresh face with their own ideas and their own visions for the show would be a good thing uh, if you want can you go over to do CW, do her own shows there I think the best thing for the franchise is that she needs to go um, but that's my review of Big Brother 14 it's been a very enjoyable season I'm looking forward to tonight's show, hoping for a Dan or Ian win, preferably Dan, um, and I hope that you've been enjoying this video, my own personal review. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and I'll hope to see you again in the future. Bye bye for now.